and welcome to the 2024 Stone Burner Open. This is our first uprising competition that we've held here on Hidden Assets, and it should make for an interesting spin, not just for the players, but for us doing the commentary duties as well. First chance we've had to kind of give you any kind of coverage like this. Obviously, we've done a ton of XMO games with our prior competitions and such, but uh, this is the first spin for me with Uprising. First game that I personally have ever commentated, and it should make for a fun one as well. Over 150 players will be competing for the glory of winning the inaugural competition here on Hidden Assets. Um, and it should be a really fun competition. Similar formats we've done previously before. Uh, we have a group stage going into the knockouts groups. Everyone plays four matches. Um, but there are a few tweaks under the hood here and there. So we're going to look at Group D uh, featuring on the bounce Luke Maniac, Sucker Tourist, and my partner in chief on the channel, Mr. CJFM, who admittedly hasn't had the best of swing in competitions over the Xima, but has been putting in the time for uh, Uprising. Definitely hoping that he has a better swing of things. You look at the Group D going into this one, and only one game played so far, which was won by Epical. Uh, you'll notice there's a slight change here. Uh, previous competition will be running a 5 3 2 1 point scoring system for first through fourth, but we've changed it to six. This is after some feedback. I had a chat with various players uh, who have played in our competition, so I didn't want to be a little bit of extra incentive to make sure folks are trying to, you know, to, to play for the win sort of thing, rather than just kind of trying to play for a decent second place. Uh, so the extra point's been added in, uh, which should give plenty of reason for folks to look to go for it. It does mean that the opportunity for big swings in league tables are very, very possible. Just one win can make a huge difference to your progression. It is top two of each group will make their way through directly to the quarterfinals of the competition. And third through fifth in each group will be part of a wildcard round. Uh, a straight shootout with other players who finish third through fifth uh, with spots going through to the quarterfinals as well. But as I've said, this is my first ever game of Uprising that I've commentated. You think that I've done like better part like 200 matches of XMO at this point. But Uprising is definitely a very different beast. Obviously different leaders, different spots, different strategies, different ideas, different mechanics. Um, so I'll try and do the best job I can for you guys. Uh, if it's a little rough around the edges on occasions, I miss bits and pieces. I'll apologize now. Um, you know, it's something that experience can only do so much for you in the previous format here and we'd have to kind of get used to it and this is a different world for us all as well uh folks of us are still trying to pick up uprising still fairly new uh and this tournament's gonna be a, probably a bit wild west of people just kind of throwing things against the wall and seeing what works so it should make for a really good spin i hope you guys enjoy the competition all right everyone so here we go our first ever uprising game this should prove to be interesting luke has the first player marker with the mouse icon which means it will be cge to pick first in blue in the fourth just like a good old classic xmo game right obviously things are a little bit different where they're all located i have to kind of get used to like where i'm gonna have my cameras and such it's gonna be uh, a learning experience for us all you know we'll make it work anyway so let's begin to look at the opening stuff here uh, opening a couple of contracts, you got uh, the four, four cost harvest for four Solari. Kind of hard to get off, um, but a very nice reward if you can. And as well as a high council rebate as well. But the Imperium, important thing is going to be the Imperium row here. And there's some very strong cards here early on. Kangler's Power is pretty popular. Uh, being able to do some trashing as you go to city or spy locations. Pretty, pretty useful. Uh, Rebel Supplier, another very strong card if you've got spies. One of Margot's favorites. Uh, Southern Elders, very, very decent faction access. Really good bond if you can get the friend stuff going as well. Very strong, but does need synergy to get the most out of it. Hidden Missive's okay uh, if the two influence a troop and a draw off a, um, a council spot. It's not the worst. Public Spectacle, though, is regarded as one of the best cards in the game. Incredibly powerful. Any spy that gets hold of this, they are kind of laughing. So uh, that is a card to keep an eye on for. As for leaders able to be selected, we can see it. We are missing Gurney. And we are missing... I'm still having to learn who we're missing on stuff like that. Gurney and Staban are the two we're missing here. So Margot looks really good here. Uh, Fade looks very strong as well. Uh, I expect you'll probably see a Shadam maybe, maybe in second spot, just going resource hunting. And Wadeep, I'd expect to see as well. Not the best board for Irulan, truthfully. So we're going to put the camera about here. Hopefully this is going to be okay. Again, still a bit of what to do here. She does go for Margot. Not a surprise. Possibly is going to have to is going to have to be prepared to early reveal for public spectacle. Um, I could definitely see that happening. Would CJ ever insta reveal for public spectacle? If his hand was bad enough, I think he might consider it. 
Fade and Third, not a surprise as well. All the spy leads are going to go very quickly. A very spy-heavy opening row here. I think you'll see Shadam get picked here probably by Bounce. Looking to go uh, double, deliver supplies, and then go deep desert shipping. I think seems reasonable. Irulan's just not great. I, 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 Irulan's all right, but I, I kind of like having Irulan when there is the option of a one-cost card, just to make it a bit less sure what's going on. Goes more deep instead, which is also fine. More deep in second, you know, try and look to get hold of the hooks pretty early. So Luke with a bit of a choice here. A couple of options. Uh, I mean, Shadam would probably what I'd do here. Jessica and Irulan and Amber remaining. All a little bit awkward. I think it's Shanam for me. Also, you got to look at this row and think, well, there's no fighters. And there's a couple of, like, the more deck building sort of leaders out there. So you've got to expect that you're going to be probably seeing a lot more aggressive leaders out here. Is that something you really want to get stuck into? Maybe it's Amber. That's about it. But other than that, and do you really want to be playing Amber? I don't know. I feel like there's a better option here than that. So that's kind of the way I would see this. All right, then. So here we go. There's no uh, school board stuff yet up here. So I guess I have to, like, whack that in manly or something. We'll, we'll make it work. Okay, here we go, then. So opening conflict is going to be the Chris Knife Skirmish. So this is the one with the uh, influence bump. Mardi will be very interested in this. He is paired with that as well, as is Margo. Uh, Margo gets Diplo, but no uh, no ring. No, no council access either. Amber is taken. Very interesting little pick here. Not an ideal opening draw as well. No ring, no Diplo of any kind. Fade finds both his diplomatic options immediately, so he's probably going to go to, like, uh, Desert Tactics, I would expect to see. So just Arakeen for Amber. Makes sense. Not a ton else going on here. Just trying to scramble for some options. Seems reasonable enough to me. Does find Seek Allies, though. Uh, Wadim's going to be up next, so you'd imagine friend kit and then probably some signet ring action, maybe to like uh, Imperial base, something like that. Or he goes Desert Tactics first, which this is his intention that he is going toward. He wants to win this battle immediately. That's the way of going about it. So I imagine we'll see Fade go friend kit then. But yeah, that's Fade. That's Wadim saying, I'm going all into this fight. Don't try and get in my way. Amma does put in all three of Arakeen, by the way, as well. Pretty aggressive. Fade will probably just limp in a troop here. Margo with the benefit of position. Has a faction access. I imagine we'll see deliver supplies for Margo would be my assumption. And we do. I don't think she'll get involved here. Once in a blue moon, maybe Margo goes like research. I so can't see that here. Uh, we see secrets for Amber. Makes sense. Picks up cool arms. Not the best card they could have found. But they will be able to use maybe pick up a card or two here and get some garrison going. Wadib, not really keen on using his Signet Ring. He's worried about pulling his Diplomacy here. One in five. But, I mean, if you do, you do. It's the way it goes. I think he is going to go Imperial Basin, is my assumption. He's goes. He's got to get troops in here. He's also going to be not particularly comfortable with the fact that Amber does have the Intrigue now. It's a little bit worrying. Not huge odds she pulls a Battle Intrigue, though. I think we'll just see Imperial Basin, and he'll uh, put the troop in. And hope he's good here. Also, he's wary that Margo does have the extra water and that he has to put troops in. Goes uh, Spice of Fire instead. They're going to pick up a couple of couple of cash here instead, which is fine. Finds convincing argument. Fade's got his second Diplo. I imagine he'll just use it. Did he just use it for um, Dutiful Service? No, he takes the early reveal. Said someone was going to do it. He goes to Public Spectacle. Looking to pair that with his ring, of course. To get hold of. He's not going to get hold of a ton of spies. Only a couple. But obviously you don't want to go into Margo. Margo does go research station. Looking for a big draw. Six persuasion found. Does she get stuck in here? Only one dagger. Ooh. Tricky. Very committing. Very committing move here. I think if, if he had found his second dagger it was going in. I think that was the intention. He was going to say if I get two daggers I go for it. Doesn't pull his ring and doesn't pull his seek allies. Which is pretty amazing. Knows two troops will give him the spice. Wadib did not make... Uh, he only drew one card. So he's probably got one dagger. But it's hard for him to have two. Margot might take his chances though. Do you put in two troops? 
It's going to put in... Wow, it does go for it. Wow, CJ, CJ goes for it. The size, he's going to spin some wheels here. I think this is more out of hope than anything else. It will slow down Wardeeb, though. It prevents the pair and will mean that he's going to have to... Uh, it slows him down getting hold of Worms, so not the worst here. So Southern Elders is taken with the Call to Arms. I think the Call to Arms is meant to be played first, I think. I don't quite know. Again, Uprising, we've not been out a ton. A couple of these kind of... There's a couple of things we're still kind of figuring out as we go here. Does make the retreat, of course. So Mwadi with just the one sword. CJ will see that it's a match. But, uh, you know, we're going to be tying. But tying is more important Uprising than it was an Iximo. Uh, especially in a situation with Mwadib there, like, him getting this is basically just, like, two points and instant worms round two. Like, I think it's worth um, making the block there. I think it's fine. Picks up Calculus. Decent card if you don't have Spy Access. And Margo with six has got a lot of cool stuff here. Maker Keeper. Both Maker Keepers out there. Wow. Tons of Fremen going on here. I think he'll take a Rebel Supplier because it's just good for Margo with going to Arakeen, of course. Do you, or do you take both Maker Keepers now? Main Keepers are really, really good cards. But does need the influence to build up, which is going to take a little while. This seems slightly better. I like this. Peels off Weeding Woman and Smuggler's Haven. Very strong card. So no intrigues to be played. It'll be an intrigue and a spice a piece for Wadib and Margo. And a spice for Amber. Expensive all around. Oh my goodness. We'll reach agreement for... Wadib could be interesting. Margo finds Spring the Trap. Ho! Huh. Juicy. So, next up, round two is Tracy. Wow. And I tell you what, if Wadib had access to Worms here, it would have been insane. So, he'll have to go Frem Kit and he'll go Frem Kit Siege. No one will be able to stop that. Whether he puts the trooper or not, I don't know. But he's going to start. He wants to get hold of the water here, does uh, Wadib. Fade, of course, has no faction access, so he's just going to start going... Um, he's going to look to try start hitting Spice Refinery, I assume. Try and set that up. Picking up a couple of Spice there. That was a bit... That was a bit laggy. Margo picks up one of her Maker Keepers straight away. Can't use it, of course. Seek Allies, Signet Ring coming. We'll want to get the Spy on Arakeen reasonably soon. You would not want Fade putting a Spy down there. That would be uh, pretty bad news. Couple of daggers in hand. No way. I mean, you could, in theory, go espionage and then use your ring to get Spring the Trap open, but it's not a matching conflict for you. It's Amber and Fade who are interested in this. Amber surely will be looking to get stuck in here. May even go Desert Tactics, looking to really go for this one. Not necessarily the strongest physical rewards, but that matching point is obviously always really good. So, Mario's got a couple of choices how to go about this. No water. Obviously used it at research station. We'll go Arakeen. I, 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 or do you go Spice of and start trying to get hold of the cash? It's not outrageous as well. I think a lot of people go Arakeen here for the draw. But you've already got your Seek Allies card. And you've got your two daggers. Do you really want to draw any more cards? I don't think you need to. Spy in the usual spot at Arakeen. That's where you want to get it as Margo most of the time. And you just rinse and repeat there, basically, for the rest of the game. We'll put the troop in. I think you should do. Makes it really hard for Mwadib to uh, get involved in this water here. Amber goes espionaging. Wow, didn't expect that. Amber is going after this alliance. Paul's Southern Elders. But yeah, what Amber's trying to do here, I think they're trying to get their, the alliance going early so they can get more out the ring here with field coffers. And get the extra spice going. I think that's the plan. And pulling Southern Elders, I think you're going to see her go to Secrets as well. She's going to absolutely just rush this alliance. Which means this combat's wide open. Wadib can't know this. Wadib surely just got to go to Siege and probably just trash the... What do you do here? He's got a ton of persuasion. Probably just go to Siege, trash the dagger. Seems good to me. As I knee the table. Ow. He will put the troop in. Kind of more out of uh, hope than anything else. But I guess if he is, he's also got reach agreement. So if he manages to um, get something, great. But he's probably looking to basically retreat it and get hold of a contract is what he's intending to do. 
Fade off to Arakeen. We'll put in the troop, surely. Picks up another dagger. Goes in immediately. Gets his first movement on the track. He can go up for a trash for a Solari, or he can go down for a spy. He'll be going for spies, of course, with Public Spectacle onto factions. Looking to just rush bumps and do all that good stuff there. Makes logical sense. So Margo, I guess, is off to Secrets? Or is she going to deliver supplies again? Does go Secrets. Picks up um, Spice Trade. Amber did kind of want to go there. But Amber could still go to Desert Tactics here. And could still get dragged into this. You think you're going to get your water back. Unfortunately, no Bene Gesserit, um in play means you don't get the troops off. But yeah, Southern Elders is a really good mid to late game card. I do think she was considering going secrets. But now it's been blocked a bit more awkward. I mean, Desert Tactics is, is fine. You're going to get the water. You're going to get a lot of trashing done, which is good. Get rid of the dagger. You can even trash off Recon as well. You can't expect to win it. Yeah, I do think Secrets was the initial plan here. So Desert Tactics it will be. Going to put in a couple. Not intending to try and win this. I think that's probably reasonable. Actually, will straight trash the dagger. Well, this could get funky. I don't think she's going to be retreating here. So, five from Wardeeb. We'll pick up Smuggler's Haven. Obviously, really strong to get cards that give you victory points. Harvester comes up here. He's tempted to pick it up because of the extra spice generation. I don't really think I would bother. But he might be tempted into it. He does. He's thinking He's thinking getting worms, hooks, managing to make some spice on the side. Fade will take this down with the couple of daggers. Four to buy. A couple of weirding womans. Maker, missive. Does take the desert survival. The arrangement is, agreement's up next. I'll show you these cards off again. We haven't done much uprising. So some of you guys may not be so familiar with the various cards. Takes the Maker Keeper. Oh my goodness, being peels off Steelgar. Possibly the best card in the game. It's up there. Still, guys, absolutely destructive as a six coster. That is going to be of interest. A couple of daggers for Margo. So, Bounce will surely be retreating his troop. What contract does he go for here? Does he go for the Harvest contract? I feel like he goes for the Harvest contract a lot of the time. I don't think he's going high council this game. But I could be wrong. Sorry about that slight interruption there. So Margo goes for Prepare the Way. Uh, as does Amber alongside Hidden Missive. Again, I don't think Hidden Missive is the greatest card in the world. He's the retreat for Bounce. I assume he's going the Harvest Contract. It's not easy to get off, but it's something that he's looking to go for anyway. So he does go for it. Arakeen Contract comes out, so it's pretty nice. Nothing else to be played here. So it will be a uh, Troop and a Spice each for Margo and Amber. And Fade will take the matching point here, along with the Arakeen Conscious. Pretty good for him. He'll be happy enough with that. And the Jitsu point will be scored. There are some shorthand or keys dotted about in this game. I don't know what some of them are. So, you know, as I say, it's, it's, it's kind of a bit of a reminder. It's almost a little bit like if you've seen our, the, like the old Art of History tournaments, stuff like that, the first ever Imperium Cup and things, a little bit more of a primitive stave in the mod. Not saying this is primitive by any stretch, but you know, maybe not as clean. Okay, next up is going to be Spice Raiders. This is a huge, huge combat here. Um, matching dagger, bump, and free spice for a victory point. That will be of great interest to some folks here. Decent second place as well. Fade's going to be up first here. Fade's just going to go ahead and pick up all the spice here. He's got public spectacle in hand. Doesn't have the match for the dagger, though. I suspect he'll just be looking to uh, just um, probably try and go Fremkit, I'm guessing. Maybe he goes Desert Tactics to trash the dagger? I don't know. Not entirely sure. Just to see what Fade's plan's going to be here. 
Margo would love to win this. She's got Rebel Supplier for Arakeen here. Very tempting just to hit that immediately and just pump in four troops and say, what are you going to do? The problem is, is that he, there's, I don't see any way that Margo's going to get hold of the free spice. Not that I can see. To get hold of the spice must flow. Uh, the spice must flow to get hold of the free spice. But I imagine this is what he'll do, yeah. Couple of cards, pulls Diplo. It's a good hand to try and draw into. This will surely all go in. No surprise there. It's got eight persuasion in hand. And this sets up Margo for Stilgar as well. Hard to see anyone revealing early for it. Amber's up. Amber's re-pulled Southern Elders again. Do you just start rushing this alliance? I think you do. I think for me, I'm probably just going secrets. And then next round, I'm probably just diploing uh, the Bene Gesserit to get your ring fully activated. I think that's probably what you're trying to do. Or you could go deliver supplies. And start trying to make a play of Deep Desert. Deep Desert is completely open at the moment. No one is really near getting hold of the spice that's accumulating up there. Six total currently. And Wadib can make a play for it. He can go deliver supplies, Siege Tabor. Maybe even blow the wall early. Maybe, maybe it's what, but uh, nothing that Amber can do about it. Amber decides she wants to get some hooks going, which can't be bad, but I, I think I like secrets, yeah, just to get your ring going. Does go for it. Pulls the spy as well. Shadow Alliance is found, which is actually pretty nice. She can actually means Amber can go to full persuasion with the Bene Gesserit Alliance and just sit on it. Wadib goes espionage. That does surprise me. I, mm, I don't, I'm not a fan of that. I, I really think, surely you just go deliver supply, Siege Tabor, and just get free water ready to hit Deep Desert next round. Not a real fan of that. And that means if you keep building up, you can actually get your Harvest Contract off as well. And you want to get that going to get Swordmaster. I think I would have preferred that route. Faye goes for MKIP with Spectacle as expected. Takes the extra bump with the Spacing Guild. Pulls his ring on his second draw. Not ideal, because he already had his Diplo in hand, but, you know, what are you going to do? Problem for Fade as well, his ring is really important to him, so that's not not ideal, but he's only offering a trash. It's unfortunate. Margo's really just got to take an action here and just look to move on. Um, I mean, you've got to go deliver supplies, surely, right? Usually it's a really popular spot. Desert Tactics doesn't... I mean, you could do that just for trying to get close to the hooks and just trashing your dagger, I guess. Which is also fine. Yeah. Mum's a bit surprised that we're not seeing any... Uh, that we're not seeing anyone really hit the Spacing Guild much. It's going to put the troop in here. This feels a bit unnecessary. I guess that they know that you don't have any swords in your deck, but I don't see how anyone's really getting to stop you here. Just overcommitting, trying to make sure the point. I don't hate it. More intrigues for Amber. Special mission now found. No spies down, but uh, could put a spy down onto a city. That could, like, cause some real problems. I tell you what, as Amber Matuli, I would have been really tempted to put that just on the Arakeen spot right now and just complicate Margot's life. Mardib just limping in the... Uh, oh, that's why, of course, yeah, when Espionage, we could put the Worman on this combat, yeah. I guess I guess this is fine, but I, I still would have preferred going just all in water here and not worried about it too much. But if he gets second place, he's going to get the water back anyways, which is exactly what's happened here. So I guess it's all worked out beautifully for him. <laughs> End of the day. Margo gets Stilgar. Margo looking pretty decent here. A couple of decent intrigues as well. Overthrow turns up on the row. Unfortunately, Margo, uh, unfortunately, Amber's at seven. Can't get it. Spacing Guild Favor looks the next best option here. Delivery Agreement's still up there. Amber wants to get hold of a... Um, Amber should really look to get hold of a Prepare the Way. You've got one. I'd probably get a second just to get um, more enabling for Southern Elders. Leadership turns up here. It's out of Wadib's price range. Just the four. It's pretty insane that Wadib is getting second place off of just a loose uh, 
Just a loose worm. That is absolutely outrageous. Picks up Impress off the Intrigue draw, having a worm in combat here. Takes up Impress, two swords, has to take a free strength card. Just takes a prepare. It's fine. Nothing will happen here, so Marga would take the point. But Muad'Dib has basically got, I think, near enough equivalent reward here. Two water, two spice, and two troops for one worm, and that's it. That is absolutely crazy. I mean, I know, like, Margo technically scored two victory points. But I feel like Wadib has scored, like, a point there. Really feels like that. That's an absolute juicy, unbelievable value there. Next up is Siege of Arakeen here. So it is walled. Wadib will not be able to put in um, any good stuff here. That's a bit of a... That could be interesting. I wonder if he might go Siege and blow the wall here. And then Deep Desert and whack it in. He's got Smuggler's Haven as well. I think that might be what we see here from Wadi. But the problem is, if he takes the... Hmm. I'm not entirely sure what he's going to do here. If he does that and goes in with Smuggler's Haven, he will not get the Harvest Contract off. And he kind of would like that for Swordmaster. It's round four. No one's near getting Swordmaster so far. Very little money out. So I think we might see that from him. We'll see. Margo obviously has to protect up Arakeen. And get the Spy back there. I do think Amber Mr. 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 Trip there. Just gathering some resources. Might see some espionage. Ah, I see. Yeah. Okay. So Margot's gonna go and um, is gonna go and get the get the hooks now. It seems reasonable. Putting the uh, spy by there though doesn't make a ton of sense. Yeah. Why don't you just put it by? Hmm. You can still click the space. Yeah. <laughs> Goes get his hooks. I mean, people want to get involved with this money. It means the wa means the wall's not coming down. So Mwadib will not be able to get Actex to Deep Desert. Not easily. He might still go Smuggler's Haven to Imperial Basin if it stays there, though. Amber should be surely going Bene Gesser to get the Alliance before using the ring, right? Decides they want to get the spice because they want to go espionage. Okay. I don't know if I'd really want to go in espionage right now, though, but okay. Whatever. Gets a coin. They must have used their ring at some point, right? Maybe they didn't. Anyways. So, Mwadib, nothing he can do here, particularly. He's going to come here to pay for the water instead. At, um, he's going to use the pay the water at gather support and get his access to deep desert this way. And then you'll be seeing Smuggler's Haven coming in just to take all the spice you'd imagine. He's sure he's got to play it now. Maybe Keeper for Fade. He's got the Benny. He's got the Fremen access, so he does get the extra spice. Also gets the Arakeen contract as well. So he gets a spy where he wants as well on any um, on any where he desires. Been public spectacle being fed here. Where would you put it? Probably like Bene Gesserit. Yeah, it's such a good spot for him. You're only hitting espionage a lot as Vader Alpha, so Bene Gesserit looks pretty strong here. So it's a flop to combat, so no one has a match for it. No one has any intrigues for it either. But people see the money and people want the money. Are we just going to go like Fremkit or something? Nope, back to the liver supplies. Just taking the points. Just going to stay out of this. So uh, good money for everyone at a not big price. Amber can just go espionage for free here. But I don't think you'd really want to be drawing. Like I say, I think you want to be going secrets here, right? Surely you've got to go Bene Gesserit. I mean, you could also go Fremen and look to go get your hooks next round. But I feel like your committees have down this. He's going to draw. I don't like drawing here when your deck's empty. 
Mm. Not a fan of this. And all your Bene Gesserit cards are kind of like here. I don't know. I, I think I would prefer going secrets again, but uh, what are you going to do? Draw space in Guild's favor. Not ideal. So no chance to get the spice together for the bump. Oh, that's a lie. So special mission could be used here. You could put a spy down, lift it with special mission, and then yeah, he's gonna do it immediately for the. He's gonna do it for the. Gonna do it for that. Okay, you could have perhaps considered lifting the spy to generate two spies and then get a bump out of it with Space and Guild's favor, but uh, not really worried about that, I suppose. So here comes obviously the spice grab. Gets the contract done, gets the victory point. Wadi will be happy enough. And he can just limp in some dudes here and just get some some cheap stuff here. Might even win this outright as well. Wadi's being given a really easy time in combat here. No real real particular pressure being applied. Fade still to go. I wonder if Fade Ralpha has interest in my like, do you, like, highline, but highline and only put in, like, one troop just to garrison up a bit here? Could also go Sadukar. Sadukar might be stronger, actually. Save a spice, get an intrigue, and say you don't have any. Gets you one of those troublesome bumps with the Emperor sometimes. Means that you could just basically, at some point, just use Public Spectacle to get your point there and call it a day. I don't hate Sadukar here. I think the garrison up is fine. Highliner, seems, Highliner, unless you're absolutely desperate to get hold of that bump, I don't think it's that necessary. So, I actually think this is not a bad spot for Sadukar. Secrets feels kind of meh. Um, Desert Tactics, you have to trash out your hand. Friend Kit's not really doing a lot for you here. He's got seven Persuasion. He's got half an eye on Overthrow. But I don't think he's got another two persuasion card that he could draw for Frem Kit to get hold of Overthrow here. So for me, I think I'd be going Sadukar. And it just sets you up for public spends to just get your point on the side later on. I think it's a nice time to go for it. He's going to go Desert Tactics though. Figures he wants to try and um, win the combat here. He's going to have to trash Dune out of his hand though. Hmm. I guess he also thinks it's a good it's a chance to try and get in front of this alliance here. I guess so. Margo with four persuasion. Can't really do anything. I don't think she'll be buying any weirding women here. So just kind of donated. Amber's got six. Leadership looks not bad, just the faction access minimum. It's also not the worst reveal in the world. Two persuasion and a dagger plus one for each other dagger you've got in your hand. Hit and miss if does reveal for one. So I think leadership's okay here. It also keeps it away from Wadi. You do not want to let him get that. That is an absolutely outrageous one. So it does. Oh, wow. Priority contracts comes up alongside livery group. That's insane. Look at that. Both the contract cards for a point are out. Fascinating. Wadi does have five. Does he get tempted into delivery agreement? Just for a spice reveal? I don't know. It's not great for him. You feel Wardeep can also try and pick up a Spice's Flow somewhere, and that would definitely not help that. Fade might go for it, though. He's got one done. I think Fade might talk himself into delivery agreement here. Nope, stays away from it. So, nothing to be done, I don't think. Wardeep can't tie or win the fight. So, nothing to be done here. Fade will take the combat down, Arakeen. A couple of troops and a bit of cash. Um, Wadi will be happy enough getting second place because it gives him his Swordmaster. And we'll move on here. This is the thing as well of, like, you know, Uprising is that uh, it's not the, you know, the times of when the uh, people get the Swordmasters is not as predictable as it was back in the Eximo days. I mean, that's definitely an interesting part about the game. Yeah, flag's auto done. Once you take the the thing out of the middle, it does give you the, the flag right away. Although, I've been noticing some people struggling to see the Arakeen one. I've noticed that. Alright, move on then.
Uh, yeah. Yellow should have two troops. So round five to take the sieges. This is what this is possibly the best worm combat in the game. It's up there. Very, very strong indeed. Couple of hooks out there, but Mardeep has no water. So Margot is eyeing up some fun times at uh, Hagger Basin or even maybe Deep Desert. It's not a match for her though. Only mouse out there is for Amber. Amber, do you feel like needs to try and win a fight somewhere? Southern Elders is in hand for Amber as well, so I expect you're going to see this getting played. Yeah, Amber's going in here. Amber, with, di with, the, with this, I think he's going to put this on the Fremen spot as well. Look to use Southern Elders to... Um... Wow, that's a bit of a surprise. I guess they're thinking that they're going to get to one of the spots, but I strongly suspect you'll see Southern Elders sent to the Fremen here. That's not ideal for Fade. It means if Fade uses his spy at the Bene Gesserit, he will not be able to put his spy back there because Ambers will already be there. Distraction there, allowing to put a spy on any spot you want, even if it's occupied. Espionage for... What do you want to cook from Wardeeb? He's going to spy up here, use his ring, I imagine, for a double draw. He's also got a draw off of Prepare the Way as well. Looks like he's going to be looking to get overthrow here. A little bit late in the day, but, uh, you know, you take it whenever it comes. He's going to be doing more drawing, though, so it's a little bit tricky. Fade's got public spectacle. Does Fade just go to, like, spice refinery? Yeah, I think he just goes spice. He's got loads of spice. Just get ready for, for Swordmaster next round. Seems reasonable to me. You can limp. You can get the two troops in as well. You should be absolutely looking to get in troops here. I reckon. I suspect what you will see with Fade as well is that he'll probably take the bump extra with the spacing guild to open up shipping access. We might take it with the Fremen actually to try and get the alliance. It's gonna be bizarre. This. This is a bit awkward for Fade here. He kind of wants the. From an alliance, but A, he has no hooks, and B, protect the sieges comes out. And Margot has got access to Hagger Basin, and he's and she's got Stilgar, and she's got Rebel Supply here. So if if Mar if if CJ wants to win this combat, like no one's gonna be able to stop him here. I think Fade's extra bump with the Fremen is gonna do not a lot here, unless he really decides to commit. You should see how he's gonna play this. Yep, yeah, off to Hagger Basin. Absolutely no debate about that. Surely Marga goes all in here. And just whacks it all in. Yep, yeah, no hesitation. No surprise there. So, Southern Elders, surely he's been coming here. What, f do you go with uh, Fremkit? Or do you go to Tactics to trash a dagger here? You've got leadership, though, so the daggers have technically more value. I'm good it is. Thinking there's a chance they can pick up Overthrow here. There, are, there is one or two. I think there is a two persuasion card in her deck. She could pill. Misses it. Signet ring. Not what she wanted to see. Amber continues to commit here. Figures they have to. It's a matching conflict. Unfortunately, they're not going to be able to win this. Margot just has too much firepower here. Gonna charge the maximum though, at least for Margot. Won't get it on the cheap. Mardi will, I assume, pull the spy as well, so we'll pull two cards. Looking for overthrow. Oh, he's missed it! Oh, Mardi's missed it! Wow, he's got seven persuasion, and he's pulled Haven. He can't. He could go assembly hall, but he gives up a point. Wow, completely misses overthrow. That is fascinating. No one's got it. Secrets for Fade. Is he not calling the spy back? Looks like he's not calling the spy back. So just taking it for faction access. Picks up detonation. Margot will chunt her in here at that. 
Yep, wondering how the spy was there. That's because of the distractions. So Fade decides not to recall the spy here, keeping it for later on for some espionage. Yeah, Margot, it's the problem with, with, with Gurney. Like, it was expensive this round, but uh, she's going to get this. It's not going to be stopped here. Amber knows she's done. Difficult row for seven persuasion, this. It's a really strange row. Overthrow. These aren't cheaper than the double weirding wounds. No one really wants a piece of. Unfortunately, one short. Muad'Dib has got a decision here. So Muad'Dib could go assembly hall to pick up Overthrow. I think you're better off just going to deliver supplies, pay the four spice for the victory point and get a water together to try and worm the next fight. We're coming into the tier threes um, pretty soon though. The wall is still up. It's not been taken out. Fade's got detonation but he's got no reason to blow the wall. As far as Fade's it means it's one less card out there that could take the wall out. So I, I think Wardeep's got to, you've got to go. I think deliver supplies is the better move here surely. Like he wants to get overthrow really badly. But surely, just playing to deliver supplies is the stronger move. It's got to be better, right? It's just a point. It's a point and a half. Like, you know, it sucks, but what are you going to do? But he also wants to get involved in the combat as well, because Fade never deployed. But Fade's got detonation. Yeah, does go for, does go for the supplies. It's just the wiser option here, I think. So Fade could play Detonation to limp a troop in to kick up a couple of spice. Yeah, he wants to get in dudes here. But I feel like you just got to hit Deliver Supplies. That water for Worms, you get in there in front of Margo. Just seems... The problem is, if you don't take this bump, how you ever get hold of the Spacing Guild point? This is my problem here. It's two spice is nice, but is two spice worth half a bump of the Spacing Guild? I don't think so. Got to get that point. This is stronger. So Fade can reveal. Do you... Doesn't bother detonating to get in two spice. Okay. I would have thought about it. So Margo will take this down. We'll get two. We'll get all the water here. Alliance, water, and troops. As I say, this is the best. I think this is the best worm combat in the game. I'm, I'm not sure it's even close. I think it might be better than propaganda, truthfully. Nothing to happen here. So Amber with a slightly pricey free spice. CJ can't feel too bad at his situation. He's looking pretty strong. Still going hand as well. He's now got access to Deep Desert as well. Spying the trap is good for later on. Looking very strong here. Oh, Roy pulls. And when you re pull Steel Guard back to back, that feels good. But next conflict, Spice Refinery. It is walled conflict here. Okay, well, that makes things interesting. I think you might see Margot go to take out the wall pretty soon. If she, I think she might well go to Siege and just blow the wall up. She's got turn order on Wadib. And Wadib doesn't have any spies down, so that might be a move we see here. Smuggler's Harvester is in hand from Wardi. He's thinking of just going to Imperial Base and taking free spice and limping some troops in. It's a spice conflict, so he does want to get involved in this to pay for Harvester later on. So this seems pretty reasonable. I think this is a point later on down the line. Fade will grab his Swordmaster ahead of Margo, of course. Margo with no faction access, no way to generate the spy at the council that can see. Goes down for the spy placement, obviously for public. Spacing Guild looks really strong. Spacing Guild looks really strong here. It's a sword conflict. Only person that matches that is Mwadi, but he's not ever going to win this. No intrigues for winning the fight. Don't know out there. Like to, to match. I think a lot of players are going to be reliant on propaganda, giving them a, a wild point here. If it comes up. Goes Fremen. Wow. Now that's an interesting move. War being declared on Margo saying you're not going to get this alliance very easy. You're going to have to defend it and take some active action. Interesting move there for Fade. CJ wondering what's going on here. Eyebrows being raised. 
kind of being told you're going to have to defend this alliance. And Stilgar's going to have to do the work here by the looks of it. That's a bit uncomfortable. Again, remember, Fade has public spectacle. So CJ has to react to this. He can't just not. He can't just ignore it. He's going to sack off the alliance. So he's kind of being forced to send Stilgar off to the Fremen here to defend it. Doesn't really want to. It'd probably be a Frem kit move, I imagine. He kind of wants. He just wants to go to the to siege to blow the wall. That's what Margot really wants to do. Make a keeper to siege, blow wall. And then um, Stilgar to Deep Desert sort of thing. Or well, at least threatening it. But uh, not being allowed here. Fade putting the pressure. CJ has to defend here. Like, I, I don't see how you don't go to Fremkit here. The uncomfortable thing for Fade, though, for, for Margot though, is that like Fade's got position. He might figure the alliance isn't really that defendable. But I don't really see what else you can do here. Your hand's not great. You don't have drawing off of prepare the way. You don't have two persuasion with the Bene Gesserit. The only factors you've got is Stilgar. Like, frame kit can't be a bad move. Well. Well, well, well. Margo is prepping up for Highliner? Mm, now that is a... That is a move. You, She's just giving up her alliance? Wow. I'm kind of surprised by that. It doesn't feel a great move. With no worms either, just taking five spice. I can't say I'm a fan. You have to justify that later on. I don't really know what you're going to be doing with that, though. I'm, I don't like that move. I'm not a fan. Amber will espionage again. So Alliance is very much secure here. Picks up a couple of cards. Spacing Guild Slayer and Prepare the Weight drawn. Looking for Spiceless Flows. Ten Persuasion in hand. Spiceless Flows is going to start coming in. Amber's got to pick up some points. I mean, Spy on there seems reasonable because of Spacing Guilds. Surely Faye's just going to go Fremkit and just take this alliance away. I mean, like, surely. Back to Mardiv. Might be wondering what's going on here exactly. Deliver supplies. Looks okay. Could go Siege as well to pick up more water alongside it. Does Mardiv want to blow the wall? It's a bit tricky to blow the wall when Margo's ahead of you. I think, yeah, just take the point here seems reasonable. Kind of monitor and see how things go. Fade is just going to surely just go frame kit and just take this alliance away. A conscious choice there by Margo to not bother defending it. Bit of a surprising give up, truthfully. I guess he was concerned that if he goes frame kit and defends, like if Fade has Spectacle and Diplo, he loses the alliance anyways. Which is exactly what would have happened, funnily enough. I don't think it was that likely. I mean, I guess there was also intrigue. You lost it too. Change allegiances. Seat ritual. Stuff like that. And just thinking it was better off just not bothering to fate, Just giving it up. Bit of a surprising move though, regardless. I think a lot of people would naturally just go to frame kit just to, like, just to try and defend it, but... So where's Stilgar going is my question. That's my issue here. Like, surely you want to play Stilgar. And, and if you're going to play Stilgar somewhere, you'd be playing, like, to a city. You'd be playing Maker Keeper. So you're giving up Maker Keeper when you could have spent Stilgar. Are you going to, like, two triangles? Yeah, I, I don't know. I just, I think Doom Desert, if you're going to go Doom Desert to, to the Deep Desert and take Spice, you might as well play Stilgar there. High Council. Margo is going for Overthrow. Gives up Swordmaster for it. 
It's all happening here. Hooks for Amber. Pulls the spy. Pulls the dagger. Not what she was looking for. She was looking for something else to allow her to play a card and uh, be fired here. Might just have to go... Oh, wait. She's got no actions anyways. So three troops in here. She's got the free spice. She might use that for a bump here. Maybe with the Emperor. And then look to just try and pick up on the side later on. Wadib still with an action to go, as does Fade. It's been a strange game this so far. Feels he's got to win the fight, surely. Calculus's swords requires trashing another Emperor card in play, which I don't think he has. So the, the bottom bit, so Calculus' reveal is just too persuasion. He has no swords. Oh, he's got his impress here. Surely Mwadi feels he's got to get stuck in. He might go Arakeen and double draw. He might also just pick up some, some spice to play with someone's harvest later on, which he does. So surely these are going in. He feels he's got to match his, his symbol while it's there, which is reasonable. So what does Fade do here? He's got Diplo. You think he'd use that a lot of the time. Secret is a point. Desert Tactics just cements the alliance. You don't have to worry about it. Um, could go Dutiful. Again, Sardaukar is still there. And I think that garrisoning, when you've got Detonation as well, I think that garrisoning of Sardaukar is, is nicer than it looks. Detonation is a really nice enabler of that. And does go Sardaukar. I like it. Oh my goodness. Wow. Finds the Ornithopter matching. So that is just a point. That's a huge find. Absolute gin. It's just a point for Fade. Margot goes to the Spice of Stone instead of Overthrow. Because, um, f uh, yeah, so um, Stilgar is worth four because the Maker Keeper is also a Fremen card. I guess, yeah, you, instead of going this, yeah, you'd be going here, wouldn't you? You'd be doing this because of Spice Trade. Yeah, I wouldn't go over for it at this point. So, Amber. Amber gets five swords. Leadership is worth three. Takes the Spice with Flow. Are you spending the Spice here for the bump? I think, I think I am. I think I'm spending it for a bump here. Like, you've got a lot of work to do, Wise. No, decides not to. Hmm. I think I would have spent it. You need those points pretty desperately. Maybe saving up some highliners. So Wadib with five persuasion cannot win the fight anymore. His pair is lost. Impress cannot do the job. And again, no Emperor cards to trash here. So Amber has caused a huge problem for Wadib here with that massive leadership reveal. And it's going to get the job done. I don't see how Fade... I don't see Fade ever playing Detonation here. Seems kind of unnecessary. So here we go. Combat it is. Nothing to be played. Amber will play spoiler and take it down. Spy, two spice, and the flag. Mardi will have to settle with an intrigue, spice, and a troop. All still up, by the way. Oh, that's a nice one for that's a nice one for Paul here. Change of the inches, very nice. And it is propaganda. Wow, unbelievable! One out of four. It's not a worm conflict, and it isn't. Huge result for Margot, who can look to get stuck in here. Amber pulls really poorly, but she can go deep desert as well. But there's not a ton of troops out there. It should be interesting. Fade Ralph is up first. Hmm, a lot of awful, a lot of tricky hands here, actually. Margot's got Rebel Supply, but no Spy. Why is that the only person with a hand that he kind of likes? Everyone else is kind of scrambling here. So, Fade would make a Keeper. Still does not have the water from the Bene Gesserit, uh, so he's just going to go out of Keen and just uh, get stuck in here. Nothing else really to do. Gets a Spice. Still no Faction Access. Imagine he'll, he'll put, he's just got to put in the free and kind of play it as he goes here. But this is going to be a bit of a scramble round. Everyone's kind of struggling here. No one has drawn great. 
everyone in trouble here. CJ has no idea what to do. He's at eight persuasion. He can't even just reveal and takes and take the the spices flow point. I think he's going to go to accept contract here, maybe, or he's going to go shipping instead. Surely he's given up on the alliance, so he's got to surely take the bump with either the Bene Gesserit or the Emperor, you'd think. Or does he go greedy for spacing? Ooh. Oh, this is very greedy. Also, going here instead of the Hagger Basin and just get Worms in? You just gotta let Muadi do that when he's got Smuggler's Haven? Guess figure he's just gotta get hold of some bumps here and some points. Didn't feel like a move he really wanted to make. Amber, the next person struggling here, has got the ring and is fully active now with the Alliance. Research station looks not a bad move here. I think I'd be considering research. You need to draw cards. You want to get troops in here. Um, what else are you doing here as Amber? Could go accept contracts. Maybe for like a cheaper high council. Maybe. Uh, she has got hooks herself. But she doesn't have to get involved here. If research station it is. Finds... Um, Whatever you want to call it. Find Summon Elders. Dagger and Recon. Oh, that's a bit of a rough draw, that. That's a bit unlucky, truthfully. Only seven persuasion. Fremen Bond is not active. I mean, you should always put in one troop as Amber. Because you can always retreat it. You should always just put in one troop. There's no reason not to put in one troop. But whatever. Not enough money to get hold of uh, Swordmaster. And uh, no one can get access to Imperial Privilege here. Wadi well, just got to go. Surely you just got to go worming here, right? No, he's gonna do this. He's gonna and he's gonna use change allegiances to get hold of the uh, to get hold of the point here by the looks of it. But he can't get it yet. He doesn't have enough spice. So Fade will go there instead. Just taking some spice. Blocking the worms. Is this going to give you a propaganda and no one's going to get any... Uh, is going to get any worms into propaganda? Surely Mardib would go seats if he can. So margo has got to get in the way here. Margo might blow the wall as well, actually. For next round. I think you might see a, wo a wall blow here. Looks like this game is going to go eight rounds here. So blowing it, you've got first to act next round. Stilgar's coming eventually. Start getting worms in. I think this is the time to blow it. I think he's thinking about it. He's thinking he might want it. He kind of like wants to get the, uh, the troop in. But I think blowing the wall is more important. The next few combats are guaranteed wall conflicts. If you don't blow it now, like, you're first in at Worms. You're not too keen on blowing the wall and giving Amber the chance to... Yeah, that's the uncovered Is He's not keen on blowing the wall because he doesn't want Amber to win this. He's thinking Amber might have, like, Highliner or something. Might have a way of generating the wall. You've only got one action. Like, how does Amber really win this with Worms here? There's only one intrigue in the game that gives water and it's not activatable by her. She doesn't fulfill the conditions of it. So I think blowing the wall is fairly safe. How would Muad'Dib get hold of the water here as well? I just don't see it. He can't make the water at uh, Gather Support. He doesn't have enough money. He doesn't have any money. Unless he has a money intrigue, in which case, you know... That's what he's worried about. I think he's worried about blowing the wall and then Muad'Dib has a money intrigue. Gather Support, Deep Desert... And takes this down. Like, Wadi kind of wants to get this game over and done with. He does not want this lingering. But this is this this combat is also a point for everyone. Propaganda is a wild symbol here. So uh it is an endgame point match with any other symbol that you have. So it's a point for everyone. And obviously those bumps are important here. But I I, I think Margot's just gotta blow the wall here. Yeah. No. 
Yeah, there it is. Cheers, Patrick. So wall blown. I just didn't see any of a. I didn't see any of a real move. Like if Wardeep has the can win the game here, then what are you gonna do? He needs intrigues to do it though. So I think I think this just has to be the move. Does he put in troops here? Is the next question. Probably not. I think he's gonna save up for next round. And hope that it matches his uh, mouse as well, but not likely. It's you know it's a one in three that it does. So seven persuasion for Amber here. I think you'll just see High Council played and Spice was flow taken. Yep. Yeah. Shame not to get much use out of um, out of uh, Southern Elders, but what are you gonna do? It's a water. Gives you your ho gives you um, hopefully worm access next round. Although her deck is kind of big. 15 cards. It's going to be 16. Amber might really struggle next round here. So back to Mwadib. No other faction access in hand. Very limited. He's got... He's got uh, Spice Refinery, Assembly Hall, and Gather Support, and that's it. Surely you got to go Spice Refinery here and get this troop in. I think Wadib was planning on going High Council, by the way. I think he was thinking of using Change Allegiances to get hold of the Spacey Alliance with Spice Refinery to go High Council. I forget what might have been what he was trying to do here. Fade will gather support, take the water. Seems good to me. Get more troops in for detonation in case you think you're going to need them. Margo with the Spice, full persuasion. Yeah. No one's been able to get all overthrow, and no one's really got a lot of contracts, so the rose just kind of got stuck. That happens sometimes. Might go for one more prepare the way. I I'm not against one more prepare the way. You've got one, I think. I think it's just the one he's got. But it is less likely you're gonna see Steelgar though. Steelgar's a really good card, so yeah, won't buy. Amber with spice must flow. Where's Mardib go for his last action? He'd just go Assembly Hall, I guess? In fact, Assembly Hall, I think, is his only legal place he can actually go here. It's been a funky old game, this. Assembly Hall with the dagger. Yep. Mardib is going to get second place in propaganda with one troop. What in the hell, man? Wadib has had some unbelievable, like, basically three second places in this in this game. Absolutely wild. So Fade's going to take this down here. Where does Fade take the bumps? Fade is interested in protecting the Fremen Alliance, but he knows a bump with any of the other factions gives him points. So I think he's going to probably gamble to take bumps with two other factions here. Maybe get access to Imperial Privilege, maybe? I don't know. Now, the other issue that Fade has got, though, is Diplomacy is actually going to override Ornithopter um, because the, 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 the Propaganda and Ornithopter will pair with each other, which means this no longer pairs with anything. So that's the only downside here. Does go for the Emperor and the point. Doesn't need to go Bene Gesh. He's got the Spy there. Looks good. Deploy your hopes coming soon. So Fopter is not actually doing anything right now. Unless he wins another conflict, which is very hard to see. Oh my goodness me. Well, Mwadib's found by access as well. Mwadib. Mwadib, I think, is now favourite to win this game. He finds by access. Oh my goodness me. And Amber's never going secrets here. Pretty insane draw. What is it? It is the sword conflict. It's Arakeen, which means yellow gets a bonus troop. Public Spectacle is now active as well for Fade. Everyone has drawn pretty meaty hands. What is going to happen here? Does Amber just blast in with Highliner? She might do so. She's got two spies down, so she would be able to pull, lift them for an extra point. She also has a dagger she has to match here. 
The problem is Amber does not have any battle intrigues, and that's uncomfortable. So a move to Highliner is very committing. But she's also, she needs to desperately start drawing and finding access to... Oh, but she needs to get access to Worms. Pref oh, no, the worm yeah, the wall's gone. She'd love to get access to, to Worms here, but of course she doesn't have any in her hand, and she may not have any more to draw. And only two actions is very uncomfortable here. So what is going to be the plan here for Amber? Very hard to win tier 3 conflicts with only two actions. And especially you got no battle intrigues and Wardeeb is lurking. By the way, I've just seen Wardeeb has re-pulled Smuggler's, Fo Smuggler's ha uh, Haven. That is disgusting. He's going to get four matches out of this. Be, be wary that he got propaganda for free. He got the Protect the Sieges second place for one worm. That was six spice. So he's had nine spice on conflicts for a worm and a troop, basically. If Wadi wins this game, you think that's probably what it comes down to. No one challenging him for a couple of these really juicy second places. And with buy access in hand, you'd think Spacing Alliance, Emperor Point, Smuggler's Haven, that's ten. Ten might be good here. Arakeen as well is the interesting one that it's it's impossible to get four points off directly out of the conflict because of uh you can't get enough spies down. Margo was up first though. Went research station, desperately trying to find spice must flow here. Arakeen you'd expect it would go to. Trying to find Spice Must Flow desperately. It's an extra point for secure Spice trades. Going to need it. Surely this is the last round, you'd imagine. Hard to see it's going to run, going to nine. Sometimes they do, though. I've seen a few. More likely, game in Uprise is going to go to nine uh, than it is an Ixinmo. Amber's surely just going to commit itself to Highliner. And just go all in here and hope it all works out. Doesn't pull the spy, of course, because she needs to try to win it and get hold of the uh, the extra point here. So he's going to hold it off. It also means that no one can go like espionage or something and put the spy on the spacing and then highline themselves. Which is something that Fade could have done if he wanted to. Could well go espionage with like spectacle um, or something along those lines. Spy up spacing and then highline himself. Definitely something that he could have done, but uh, the spy being left there prevents that. Wadid needs money. And he needs to use some of his intrigues now. But he's, his money will come from the Spacing Alliance, so... Oh, it's really hard for him to get everything here, though. Change allegiances. He almost wants that free spice for the bump, but he needs it for a point. Bit of a tricky spot here for Wardeeb. I wouldn't be surprised to see Wardeeb. Uh, oh, man, this is awkward for him. It's a little cluttered. I wouldn't be surprised to see him change allegiances, just sack off a bump with a faction to get hold of the... No, he does it this way. He does it this way. And by access, surely he's going to be... He's going to use change allegiances along with buy access here to get hold of his other bump here and do it this way. And then change allegiances is coming here to get hold of that point. Again, Wardeep has managed to get four points out of smuggling team, which is completely ridiculous. Should never let anyone get that many points out of that. Completely heinous. Fade puts the spy with um, the Sardu car, so we can at least try and get hold of that point here. It's a scramble for second here. Fade looks in decent shape for it. But Margot's going to try and make something happen here. No higher access, of course. Needs the spice must flow. She's got eight persuasion, 10 persuasion currently. Arakeen, she could pull the spy and draw three cards. The problem is, is Margo really wants to get one more spy down. But I don't think there's any way for her to do it unless she, like, flukes an intrigue. I 
don't see how she could ever, ever get a second spy down outside of that. Like, you could go and find Stilgar, but Stilgar's not doing a ton here. Options look limited. I mean, Spice was Flow is two points, so at least gets you to eight. Just feels like ever since he made that Deep Desert move, it just feels like it's kind of... It's all kind of gone awry from there. It was looking not too bad up until that point. But ever since that move, it's just kind of not really gone well. I'm not saying that's why he's in the spot he is, but just felt like there was a bit of a momentum loss there. And now he's in a really, really awkward spot. Decided never to bother defending the Fremen Alliance, so that point was lost. But the thing is, if you're gonna the problem is if you're not gonna bother defending the Fremen Alliance, you have to get hold of all the friendships. And he's not managed that either. No good options here for CJ. No good ones at all. I mean, Aaron Keenan just pull three cards. Can't be bad, but like, how do you even win the fight as well? Do you go secrets and hope to get lucky? Do you go Sadu Car and hope to get lucky? Just gonna get the draw here. Oh, Paul's Dune Desert. It's getting harder now for him to, to make much progress here. Hit and miss if played. Picks up a Devour here. Which is actually really good. That's 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 extra swords because there's a worm. Oh no, no, no worm access unless he flukes it out of a draw. Oh, finds leadership. Bink finds leadership off of the draw of hidden missive. That that is an insane pull. Amber Tooley. Is Amber Tooley gonna win this game? With two friendships? Oh my goodness me. Could be an insane swing here coming. Wadib knows it's last round. He's just trying to think how to maximize points here. Surely you just go to Imperial Basin... To get change of the going and you use that to swing a point. Uh oh, he doesn't need this he doesn't need the spice actually to get change of the and get the point there. But spice tiebreak could be relevant, and I think that might be something you've got to consider here. Amber will not be get hold of any spice here. So smuggler's harvester to Imperial Basin is just free spice. Deep Desert is also there, and you've got the water to spend. It's two spice as well. And you're going to get some sort of reward. I mean, you maybe like uh, double third place. You get a load of spice, load of um, Solari, and like that might be relevant for tiebreakers here. It might be his best move. What else has you he got here? He's got two actions. But I think he's just going to go deep desert here and just get, get a load of worms in. It doesn't feel great, though. He's in no particular danger, but technically speaking... Um, Abba could take it away. There is one intrigue in the game gives water. Uh, it's a counselor's one. Uh, if you have a high council seat, you can trade, you can get it to water for it. So Abba, in theory, could have one entry to get in front of Deep Desert. It doesn't feel the greatest move, but I don't think there's any super, super great moves. It's just going to go for the spice. It's just going to go for the spice here and figures that he's just going to, um... Just take Spice for tiebreakers, looks like. The thing is, he's not going to be able to beat Fade. I mean, he is right. He's just going to try and stack up with as much Spice as possible and, and uh, close his eyes and hope he's good here. 
But he picks up a couple of spice on the side as well. Courtesy of his ring. So Margot's off to frame kit. Looking for Steelgar. Misses it. Oh no. Disaster draw for Margot. Finds the dagger. That's unlucky. And Spiceless Flow is missed. That's a massive blow for CJ. Maybe you should have just... Maybe you just... Uh, I don't know. Maybe you just you just reveal and take the Spiceless Flow. I don't know. But took the risk. Missed it. It's a third spice or so for Amber Matuli, who might be about to win this game. Well, Deep's just on resources. So he's going to get to 10 points. Is he gonna try and uh, he's gonna try and fluke an intrigue to get him there, or find his diplo? He draws a, he draws another card. Impress will go. Can he fluke away to get hold of the Emperor Alliance? Not with that. And not with that. So, rolled some dice. Doesn't get there. Fade will beat Fade will beat him to it. Sardaukar it is. No way. No! He's got detonation! He's found his power! Oh my gosh! Fade Ralph is gonna win the conflict! Oh, that's so unlucky for Amber. And there's nothing she can do about it. That is absolutely disgusting. Does Fader Alpha pull the spy, though? Or does he gamble for another point? That's a good question. Overthrow taken. Hoping to fluke something. Manipulate is not helpful. It's not happened for CJ, unfortunately. Good start, but just kind of unraveled towards the back end of it. Mardi just going to pick up what spice he can. In the hope that it all works itself out. But this is out of carnage here. Fade Alpha pulls Spice's power off Sardu Car when he's got detonation in his hand already as well. Absolute gin. Could not have found a bit of an intrigue here, I don't think. It might win in the game. Disgusting draw. Nothing else for Fade to do here. 10 points does not look it's going to be enough here. He's probably going to hold on for second place, though. And here comes the, the, the hideousness of it all. And detonation comes in. In they go. And Emma realizes she's in huge trouble here. She's going to play, obviously, she's going to play Devour, which is, plus, which is only plus two swords. Doesn't even have any worms in. And Amber is, is finished here. Amber was looking good, but uh, yeah, Spice's power has, has ended this. Fader Alpha is going to get a match point because of um, Ornithopter. The Ornithopter matches with the Ornithopter. The wild symbol matches with the dagger. He's going to get a point out of Arakeen. He's going to be able to lift two spies for another point there as well. Cyclone Choice is going to steal this at the absolute death. Devour is only two. And that's it. Fader Alpha pinches it from almost out of nowhere. With an insane Sardaukar hit. Oh, he didn't even need Spice Power, I guess, in the end. But it doesn't matter. So Fade gets the Arakeen point. He gets the Spy point. Bounce realizes he's done. And uh, Fade will get two points to match here. 
So two end game points for Fader Alpha means Cyclotrois wins this one. Wadib just needed things to go his way at the back end of the game, but it didn't quite happen for him, sadly. CJ was in a decent spot mid-game, but just kind of un it just didn't go for him. And uh, Amber maybe cruelly taken away. Had chances to actually just outright win this game, but uh, didn't pull it in the end. Yeah. Margo. Not happy. Still guard, bottom of the deck. What are you going to do? Good game. Thanks, everyone. It was a bit of a yeah. wild one, this. Oh. i got to admit, watching it. It was always going to be it's the first one I've covered. Um... Yeah, it was it was a lot of a lot of wackiness in this. It was it was a it was an interesting match to watch though. Like a lot happened, a heck of a lot happened. Yeah. I mean, like four smuggler points from our team is absurd. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. Amber had chances to win this until crazy at the end. Obviously, this yeah. was really unfortunate. It was like, there was a good thing going here, but like sort of like round four ish, it was looking not too bad for Margo, but just kind of just sort of started just drawing, kind of dead. It was a bit awkward. Yep. Uh, it's typical. It's typical. I, I drew a dagger when I needed to draw anything with persuasion. Yeah. Like there's one dagger in my in my deck. Like there's also. Uh, yeah. It, was... it would have been nice to just hit. Well, the last round I didn't get any um, any green access either, so I had no green access, so I couldn't get Swordmaster. Yeah. So yeah. One behind. And, and were... Just at that point, I knew I was really toast. So. Yeah, it was difficult as well. Like it was. It was. Yeah, it was a really, really kind of weird awkward spot i mean i guess the argument is do you just not go for him can just reveal and just take the spice because the spice trade yeah, i guess I, yeah i could have done that i mean it would have got me to eight yeah. um which is probably the right play i played a little greedy to go here and, and i probably could have thrown in a highliner as well yeah. that didn't i didn't hate me. reset station i didn't hate that uh it was fine i i figured like if i went highliner i wasn't going to get to research station yes yeah agreed um, and yeah, I just the for some reason I had way too many blues in my deck this game. So, yeah, sometimes it happens. Indeed, but uh, yeah. Well, it's... on round seven, on round seven, having the public spectacle, my ring and my diplo is my last three cards. <laughs> yeah, nice. I knew those games that I oh, played yeah. in round eight. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So there was, there, was, uh, there was one turn. There was one turn. The last two cards in my deck. One of I needed to hit one of these two cards. It was my. It was Stilgar or my dagger. Oh, no, it was, no, it was, uh, it was these two. It was, um, Diplo or my, or my, uh, Signet Ring, excuse me. And I just needed to hit one of those two cards, and they were both at the bottom of my deck. And that was a very frustrating, um, yeah. moment. So there's a lot of weird stuff that kind of just didn't work out for me. But, yeah. But you had everything going right from the beginning. Um, yeah, just, nice, nice yeah, he got some absurd that. value. I mean, he, yeah. on the bounce, basically got nine spice for a worm and a troop. Yeah, that was absolutely dumb. crazy. Um, I just you know, couldn't clinch the dang no, combat. Or couldn't, like, can, was, could never match the pair. No, got, got no, no. I was so close to uh, yeah. the spice was flow yeah, once. The, the twi the twice, the twice is, denial mid deep. That. This is the one I was hoping was going to come up. Yeah. Uh, because I was sitting on a bunch of Solari and yeah. I just could not. Like, this this was the absolute worst combat for me. Yeah, yeah, it was not great for you. Yeah, you the, because you got spring as well. So it's kind of hampers that. It was not the one you wanted to see. <laughs> I, I got to ask as well the the fremen. I'm guessing conscious choice to the side not to defend that. Uh, well, if so my my choice was if I defended it and he didn't have it this round, I was out of position, mm. and then he would just like go here, and then he could steal it. So there was nothing I could do. Mm. Um, or if I did, if I defended it, then I'm just I'm wasting my my diplo going here to defend like to, to finalize that mm. when i really don't want to send it there and i needed to hit some other places so, yeah um and i still didn't get up here i, I couldn't even get to I, like there was hardly any access in this game honestly no there was there was the very limited faction access yeah. um, Most of it was fragments, ignoring ignoring so overthrow obviously you grab that at the end oh, yeah that's not even a card this but yeah like it was uh still guy i think it was your only additional access card i think that was it. Yep. All I had so, was it was always going to be tricky for you. On that, that round that I took the, on that round I took the alliance, I was holding both my Diplo and the public spectacle. And, and um, I didn't have any water, if I remember right, but I could go Frem kit and then get the water, and then that would let me go with yeah. the other one. Yeah, Desert uh, Tactics, yeah. The Desert Tactics. Yeah. yeah, as it turned out, you couldn't defend it, but uh, it was interesting they decided not to worry about it anyways. Well, no, he couldn't. If I went Frem Kid, he was blocked. So he had, he had, the, he had the spy. He did at the time. That 
not that round. I had the spy on there. Oh, you did have a spy. Yeah. So there was yeah. absolutely no way. That, I that, that was what triggered. That, that's what clued you into the fact that I was probably going to go for it. Remember, you were sitting there going, oh, why would you put a spy there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Uh, the other option in yeah. the round was to go to secrets and steal from bounce, but. Like, that probably would have been the correct play, honestly, because he was holding some bombs well, in his hand. Yeah, as it turned out, yeah, he had a lot, a lot of good stuff there. Ah, that feels bad, especially when you're like, oh, I'm just going to play this uh, get to bump card. Like, I would have loved that card. I had so yeah. much money. But I think Anything. you already had the friendship at that point. I'm not sure. Uh, I did, but... I could have potentially, like, I mean, anything would have helped at that point. Yeah, it was one of those, you're just kind of, like, trying to Air get some card, You know, anything would have been nice, but, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just, I had a bunch of things I couldn't play. Like, I could never get here the entire game. Yeah. Um, I think I maybe got there one. No, I didn't get there at all. I think that was just no. every single time. Yeah, well, Amber obviously there. went really heavy for it, so. Yeah. yeah. I should have been fine with Margo, but, again, didn't draw my ring the turn I needed it mm. to use it. So, <laughs> that, was, that was too bad. Yeah, but. Yeah, but you guys played really well. Yeah, thanks for the games, guys. Thanks for the games. Yeah, yeah thanks, thanks. for Good luck the rest of this tournament for everyone. Yeah, you too. Yeah, you too. Good game. So let's look at the group table at the end of that one here. Everyone in Group D now has played one match so far, and Cyclotronus win will put him at an early lead for his different point structure in this one. So the normal 5 3 2 1, we have changed to 6 3 2 1. So extra incentive to go for the wins. Yeah, definitely Cycle, I think, uh, had to kind of bid and wait his chance there, but uh, absolutely gobbles of value out of Pablet Spectacle. Two alliances, um, and managing to get that round 8 win. Uh, you know, huge, huge draw there on the Sado car, making it all work out there. So super well played for him. I think mean, Bounce will be a little bit disappointed to only get to the second place. It's still three points is not too bad. Um, although to get four points out of Smuggler's Haven and Alliance and still not win it, while Deep just not able to. I don't think he won a single combat this game, even with his very, very cheap second places. But of course, there's a long way to go in this group. Everyone gets to play four matches. So even for those further down, one win can catapult themselves right back into this swing of things. Um, but definitely Cyclone and Epical will be happy with their return so far. That's going to do it for us here. So you guys have enjoyed. Uh, obviously, this is definitely an experience. This is the first Uprising game I've ever covered for commentary. And uh, definitely felt a very different experience to like of uh, doing an XMO game, for example, where people do have the opportunity to take much more different paths in this one. It's not so clear. And again, the game's just not been out anywhere near as long. So we're still kind of trying to learn what kind of works and what doesn't work. And this is an interesting game as well. You know, Fortune definitely turned as we went for it. So a good spin, a good game. And obviously play more for the competition. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Take care of yourselves. We'll see you in the next conflict.